Jeez, people, where do I even start? Uh, fair warning, there are spoilers ahead. Uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I will explain the giveaway gift thingy I am doing at the end of the video, so stick around for that. Uh, I'm going to treat these two episodes as one for my sanity and the sanctity of the storyline, so here we go. Number 10, Bandon isn't a creature of darkness. This is uh, interesting. I tend to agree with Will here. You could have fooled me. Uh, it makes you wonder what exactly makes someone a creature of darkness, uh, since it apparently isn't killing a child in front of their parents or kidnapping an innocent relative of someone you keep saying you like. The definition of a creature of darkness they have in the Forelands really doesn't jive with mine. I mean, he infects Flick with a deadly contagion, you know, just for laughs. So he isn't a creature of darkness. Number nine, but Eritrea is? Okay, that's a bit out of left field. Armageddon's Children isn't technically a Shannara story point. It uh, never comes up in the books, only the series that ties the Word and Void uh, series to Shannara. For those of you who have uh, read all of the books, including the Word and Void, it seems to me that they have mixed some of Nest Freemark into Eritrea. Uh, if you're not familiar with the books, Nest was a central character in the Word and Void, and had the potential to basically burn everything down if she sided with the Void, or stave off the end if she sided with the Word, which is basically what Cogline was saying, and she was uh, part demon as well. I I'm not sure how I feel about this just yet. If done well, it could be very cool. Of course, it's a 50-50 chance right now as to whether or not the writers can pull it off, uh, given some of their other shenanigans lately. Which brings us to... Number eight, time travel. Look, I like a good time travel storyline as much as the next Doctor Who fan, but they are incredibly difficult to do well in a show that is 100% about time travel, let alone a show that is about the future, magic, and demons. That being said, I was picking up what the writers were laying down right up until the point that Will told Shay about the whole father thing. That's like rule number three of time travel. Don't interact with your earlier self, never get involved in a land war in Asia, and don't share future knowledge with people, especially not of the baby-making kind. And look, how are we to believe his mother, who he made quite the impression on, wasn't going to realize later on that her adult son came and had a visit with she and Shay? I mean, seriously, people. That leads us to number seven, Shay Amsford. All of that being said, I really liked the actor who played Shay. He didn't embody the more noble, altruistic aspects of the character, but that seems spot on for this version of Shay. They really stripped him down and made him a tragic character rather than the selfless hero he was in the books. One of the best aspects of Shay to me was his small town, ordinary existence. You could identify and root for him since he was just like you. He didn't fit in, but had the potential for greatness deep inside. It just had to be pulled out. That's what we all think of ourselves, either secretly or openly. I think they captured this pretty well in his character. And uh, that's why I kind of dug this version of him, I guess. Number six is uh, King Ander. Uh, yeah, that's just nuts. I don't... Killing Ander, which is, I mean, we don't know for sure yet, but he got run through pretty darn close to the heart with a sword. And uh, it's kind of hard to come back from that magic or not. So um, I'm assuming that we've said goodbye to King Ander, which is kind of nuts because there aren't any more Lessadels. So if he dies, the family line ends, I guess, because we've not seen any Lessadels other than him because his father and his brother and Amberlay are all dead. So I'm kind of looking forward to how they get themselves out of this corner they've painted themselves into and also a little worried about how they're going to get themselves out of this corner that they have uh, painted themselves into. Number five is the Druidic Cage. Just a fun thing to say. As friend of the channel Julie Lambert pointed out to me, this seems like it was inspired by the triagonal or triagonal something triangle shape that you trap people in uh, that appeared in the Shannara novel Strachan, 
I thought this was an interesting plot device, since it allowed for Bandon and Alanon to be in close proximity to each other without all the punching and the slashing and the stabbing. Uh, it gave us time to see their dynamic and how it's changed from the first season. Uh, number four, the breaking of the sword. This was just weird. Uh, we have a story about a magic sword being broken in the Shannara novels already, but it sure isn't the sword of Shannara. Uh, in the later novels, the sword of Lee, which is infused with magic in the witch song of Shannara, is broken during a uh, desperate battle. It became one of the best storylines in my mind of those books, since the bearer of the sword, Morgan Lee, uh, became broken as well. His story became one of recovery and overcoming his own brokenness. It was fantastic. His sword is made whole once again in the books, uh, which will have to be done in the show as well, since the magic of the sword has been greatly compromised. Uh, since they have referenced the Silver River, I'm assuming that will play a role in its restoration. Which brings us to number three, the Silver River. This could be good, friends. This could be very good. Uh, one of my favorite side characters in the Shinara universe is the King of the Silver River. I talked a little about him in my History of the Elves video, which you can find linked uh, in the description. In a nutshell, he is a creature of fairy that survived the destruction of the Time of Fairy. He survived the Age of Man and all the wars in between. Uh, he is a constant help to those who are fighting to save the world, appearing here and there to give aid and shelter. If they are invoking the Silver River, his home, I am hoping that means he is going to show up, which makes a certain amount of sense, as he was instrumental, you know, after a fashion, in the restoration of the Sword of Lee after it was broken. So, uh, time will tell, but I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Number two, Alanon. So I was wondering how long they planned on having Alanon around. You know, in the novels, he dies in the third uh, book, Wish Song. I had hoped he was going to stay around for another season, you know, if the show continues, since I really enjoy his character. Uh, I am guessing that he is either really dying, in which case they could bring a version of the Hadeshorn in, which would allow him to continue in the show as a recurring guest star, or he is going to have to go into the Druid's sleep for the remainder of the show to heal. Either way, I believe that when the climactic season-ending battle happens, Alanon won't be there, much like in the ending of Wish Song. Which brings us to number one with a bullet, the death of Flick. As I have said before, I'm a huge fan of Flick, which is why I have been pleasantly surprised by this season. They've given his character a mini-arc that is pretty satisfying, having him sacrifice himself for Will and the effect it had not only on Will, but Bandon and Alanon was beautiful. I hate to see his character go, but if you're going, that's the way to do it. I am looking forward to see what uh, lasting effect this has on those present, especially Will and Bandon, since from the response you get from Bandon, the reaction, that was not what he was expecting to happen, and it took him off guard. So another twist in his character uh, profile, I guess. Well, that is it for another review video. As I said, I will now talk about the giveaway. Um, I'm just going to call it a giveaway because gifting is hard for people to understand. So there's a giveaway being run. It uh, started a couple of videos ago and will continue until the end of next week uh, where I will be giving away a $25 Amazon gift card. You don't have to be a subscriber or any of that stuff, but I would appreciate it if you were, obviously. Just comment on a video and uh, this video, the last video or the next video, and I'll be choosing one at random and uh, awarding the gift card. Uh, that's about it. Uh, oh, other than to say, um, I am about to launch a Patreon uh, page. People have, uh, some people in the comments and a couple of people have contacted me directly and um, suggested I get one of these going. So it's almost done. I'll launch it next week, probably. And um, I would appreciate it if you give it a look. Since Google has decided to come down on creators with monetization. Every video I upload gets demonetized and it's just it's difficult to create uh, any revenue to help support the creation of new videos with Google right now unless you're a massive channel, which we are not. I'd appreciate your support and I appreciate it just as much if you don't support. I will see you guys in the next video, which will be the Bloodlines video. I was working on it, stopped to make this video and then going right back to it so it will come out this weekend. And that's it for me.